Uh-oh. Yeah, it's pouring. Uh, the sun just came out. Well, it's raining again. The sky is actually trying to be blue. Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles NVW Garage. I am your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my 1956 Beetle Eleanor right here behind me with her engine that you see right there. I'm going to be doing a little bit more work on this engine today. I received a whole bunch of parts for it this week. Uh, little things that... Uh, should be able to make this engine run properly. So we're gonna go ahead and get to work on that today. Now, I am expecting rain today. Uh, it is in the forecast, and actually it should be raining right now. Remarkably, the birds are chirping like crazy, and uh, the sky is actually trying to be blue. The sun keeps popping out, so I don't know what's going on with the weather. But as we have seen, the forecasters have been very, very wrong right here in Pensacola. So <laughs> we're just gonna go ahead and get to work today. But that's one of the reasons why I've been away for a few days, why I haven't gotten anything done, is because both work and rain has just not been very good to me at all for working on this project. I got a couple of Q&As in, but even that, <laughs> even that was few and far between. But anyways, we're back today. And we're gonna be working on Eleanor right here and doing a little bit of technical stuff on that engine. So thanks so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to pluck that little dingle belly next to the subscribe button after you hit that subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out Duckman Cycles and VW Garage up on the Facebook group page. And if you'd like to email me, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. We'll be back right after the intro. All right, we're back. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, if you remember correctly, the engine didn't want to rev up, and I believe it's because the main jet is actually um, a bit too small. So I've got the replacement jets over here. I've also got some rubber gogies to cap off all of these vacuum uh, lines that are over here, which I put some tape on. I put my fingers on these the other day, and I got the engine to uh, perform no differently with those covered up. But uh, these are the proper bits that are going to go on there. Once I get the uh, vacuum advanced distributor on here, I'll uncap that side and run a line to it like we're supposed to. But what we're gonna do for now is we're gonna pop this apart and we're gonna get down inside this carburetor and we're gonna pull that jet out and we're gonna upgrade that first. And then we're gonna attempt to do a run on this thing. This is going to be a uh, very unedited video, very raw. So you know, if I make a mistake or if I cut myself or start cursing, we're just gonna have to deal with that. <laughs> this is something that was requested to, uh, to make. So I'm going to push through it and see what you guys think about it. So if you like this video, you know, of course, leave that comment down below and tell me what you think of it. But we're going to go ahead and get to work here. And uh, the edits are going to be very, very minor. It's only going to be like if I walk away for a little while to go answer the phone or grab a tool or something, you know, that'll be the only time I would cut. But let's go ahead and uh, start taking some stuff apart here and see what we can do with this thing. Now the jet to this carburetor lives inside. Ordinarily, you would put a screwdriver down into the side of it here to loosen it up, but you won't be able to retrieve it. You have to actually take it out through the top. So what we're going to do is take the top off of the carburetor first. So we're going to yoink the spring. Get that out the way. be nice if I would have used my um, little driller impact driver here just to turn the screws because this it takes time. And it's frustrating kind of time. Carefully lift that up. Being extra careful not to lose the screws that are on it. A wire tangled in here. All right, we'll just get this put out of the way. And we're gonna take off our gasket. We're gonna remove the little clip in here that retains the float. And then we're gonna remove the float itself. 
and there's a little pin in this float in the hinge this little guy here be very careful if you take your carburetor apart that you don't drop that because once it's gone it's gone okay I ran the carburetor kind of dry there's not a whole lot of fuel in it that's one of the advantages to having an electric fuel pump and one of the reasons why I have one all right where's my rag at here can't find my rag that means it's the first video cut <laughs> Alright, got our rag, put this under here, and once I remove that, once I remove the plug on the side of the carburetor here, it's going to um, drip out the little bit of fuel that's still in here. It's not much, but anyway, it's going to make a mess if I didn't put a rag underneath it. Right, here it goes. I don't have hardly anything at all, actually. Okay. Okay, that screwdriver is not happy on here. Taking off the coil so I can get the screwdriver into the side of the carburetor and remove that jet. Alright, now we can go in this way. Alright, now this jet was a 130, and wait a minute, you know what, I misread that. It was a 130 and uh, I thought it was too small, but it says 120 on it. I must have not had good lighting when I looked at it, this is definitely too small. Well, without a doubt, we had too small of a jet in here. So let me go ahead and grab a bigger jet, we're going to put in, um, well, Hell, we could actually put a 130 in it now, and it might be just fine. Now, well, let's see what we got. You know, I don't see the jets here either, so I'm going to have to go inside and get them. I believe I left them on the kitchen table. Be right back in a second. All right, we're back from inside, and it just started raining again. <laughs> but I grabbed the jets that I have here, and this um, 120 that I had that came out of this carburetor, and the 130 that I've got here... Looking at the size of them, the 120 is bigger, considerably bigger, which tells me that somebody drilled it. So something is wrong. So I got a um, 130 wire gauge here, and I put it into the, the, oops, that's not the 130. This is the 130. Fits perfectly. If I go to put it into the uh, 120, not only does it go in, but it's really loose. So the symptom of me revving it up actually wasn't so much that it was running lean, but rather that it was running severely rich. I put a wire gauge in here up to, to 1.45 millimeters. In other words, this is the equivalent of about a 145 jet. So that thing has been messed up. So this carburetor, despite being new, somebody must have slapped another jet into it at some point. They probably took the stock one out and then slapped that one back in when they realized that they messed that jet up. But uh, this one should work just fine in there. So this is what we're going to put in. There's our proper 130. Put that up into here. That's going to be amazing if that's what it is that makes this work. You know, when I took this carburetor apart, the only thing that looked funny inside of it was that jet. Everything looked brand new on it, but the jet was kind of black. You know, the color of the brass parts didn't match that of everything else. So yeah, I think I have to say that somebody probably got the bright idea to drill out that jet at some point to uh, make their car faster. Yeah, because more gas makes it faster, right? <laughs> and then um, 
once they screwed up they turned and looked at the shelf that they had and they had a brand new carburetor sitting on it so they knew that the jet in there was was good so they took the jet out and put it into their existing carburetor and got it up and running and fixed what they broke yeah somebody pulling up here what what kind of craziness we got going on Somebody lost a belt, huh? Yeah, was a belt lying in the road. Apparently she put it on top of her car when she left. She drove off and it fell down. All right, we got our plug put back in there. Okay. <clears throat> what I'm looking at right here is the uh, output spout to the accelerator pump. And on the accelerator pump here, you want to make sure that um, when it blows the fuel down into the engine, that it doesn't hit any of the other objects that are inside of here, like the butterfly or the little downspout. Uh, if it does, it'll cause it to, you know, diffuse and just do not what it's supposed to do. It needs to go directly down into the engine. Uh, you know what? While we're in here also, I think what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, maximize the accelerator pump action also and I think I can do that with a flathead screwdriver right from where I'm sitting right now let's see I did that right. <clears throat> you know, I'm uncertain. I do see my leak too. It is the accelerator pump. Okay, we're going to pull this carburetor off. Remember, I had a, a wet spot that was appearing on the uh, shroud right back here, and I can actually see it is the diaphragm leaking on there. So we're going to actually rip this carburetor right off of here and we're going to throw it up on the bench and we're going to replace that diaphragm on it. I guess it just got old. Nuts drop. here now so, okay oddly it seems stuck all right this diaphragm is definitely leaking you see how it's all wet okay so we're gonna open up this cover and I have a rebuild kit inside so we're gonna replace that diaphragm ah uh, I don't think you guys really need to see me do that one two three four screws flip this little thing over as a square plunger that's inside of there it's it actually looks like a giant gasket with a metal metal center to it drop that out put the new one in and we're off and running all right, back in a minute. All right, we're back. I replaced that diaphragm that's in there. The um, one that went in there is actually really soft and really thin, like neoprene. Very different from what was in there, which felt more leathery. Um, 
I guess 40 years just wasn't good to it. However, this particular screw also wasn't tight. It could be that I didn't tighten it properly, or it could be that it vibrated loose. But, you know, let's just say it vibrated loose. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and put this carburetor on here. I've got the um, accelerator pump maximized. I've got that jet now set to the proper 130. I started to get these rubber gogies here put on. i got to cover two more of these vacuum ports. Uh, we're going to bolt this carburetor back together. We're going to fire it up and see what happens here. So, first things first, drop that puppy right down on here. That sound you're hearing is somebody running a tile saw across the street. Looks like he's running a wet saw, but he doesn't have any water in it. He's wearing a breathing mask instead. To each his own. Okay. Go ahead and get these. Plunger back in. Those guys, just for some reason, I always just finger tighten them. I've never had one come out. You could tighten it with a wrench, but yeah, I just finger tighten them. If you ever had to diagnose one, it's a whole lot easier to be able to pull it out when you don't have a tool. And I've never seen one fall out on its own. Alright, <clears throat> that's ready to go. Our lid back on here. That should get us set. Put a couple of these little rubber gogies. You gotta love them. Put one on here. One more on here. Oops. I drop it. That one didn't fit as snugly as the other ones did. Let's try that again. I don't know where it went. There we go. Guess I had one that was a little bit malformed. No worries. Okay. We can put our coil back up.
Alright, our positive wire connects to the plunger. Snakes back around to the choke. Make sure all this stuff looks like it's right, it does. Connect our throttle spring. Action looks good, choke looks like it's doing what it's supposed to. All the little components are where they need to be. Yep, everything clears the alternator. In fact, it clears it better than it did before. Okay, got this here. Check out our spark plug wires. Looks like we have one pinched in there. It's not really a good thing. Spark plug wires are a finicky thing. If you do get them pinched between two metal surfaces, sometimes when that insulator gets thin, that spark will want to jump to ground, and then you have a cylinder that misfires. So it's one of those things you want to observe. Okay, I think we're just about ready to rock and roll here. Let's go ahead and uh, hook up our electrical, get our oil light hooked up. Looks like we missed our distributor over here too. Let's connect it to ground, and this, once again, this is the only thing that connects to ground on that coil is the distributor. The distributor actually will ground it up via points. Right. This is our hot wire, not yet connected to the battery. We'll connect that to the positive. Okay, I'm going to roll this chassis out a little bit. It's one of the reasons why the body is staying in the garage is because it's been raining on and off. I don't really want to get it wet. But we can move that chassis back about another two or three feet so that way I can get to the battery and get to the controls, which are really makeshift, you know, plug the wires in just like this kind of stuff. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get some of that stuff hooked up here. Snagged on something. Let me go inside and figure out what it is. Yeah, it turned out it was the compressor hose inside. Just had to move it. Go ahead and get a uh, electrical wire hooked up to my battery because that battery is a little finicky. I'm going to actually run a separate video. We're going to try to rejuvenate that battery using some of the YouTube methods and uh, see if any of them actually work. It's got my curiosity. So let me go ahead and get that set up too. Let's see what happens when we uh, go ahead and juice it. Right, here's the fuel getting into the carburetor. Ah. I don't see anything coming out of here yet. I wonder if the float stuck again. Hmm. Let's 
see here. We have yet yeah, coming out of this line. Yep. Red. See the accelerator pump pumping at all. I got a feeling there's no fuel getting in the carburetor. All right, we're gonna take the carburetor top back off and we're gonna check that float valve because remember before it got stuck, there's a possibility that when I set it down, maybe I hit it too hard or something and push that valve in. No, it's got fuel in it. Accelerator pump just isn't doing its job. I wonder what's wrong here. Must be something clogged somewhere. That's really interesting here. It should be bubbling out the top. There's got to be some clog in there somewhere. All right, looks like the carburetor's coming back off. Um, <laughs> you guys get a real appreciation for how long this stuff takes because, as I said, this video is not going to be that edited. <laughs> Uh, where is my carburetor cleaner? There it is. Let's just see if for grins we can push it back through whatever might be in there. not building any pressure at all. Okay. Looks like we're gonna disassemble this thing again.
Well, good news is it's not leaking. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's not building any pressure. Alright, carburetor comes back up. I'm not playing around. All right. This little hole right here is where it should be pumping out of, and it's not. And before it was. I don't know what's going on here. All right. Let me find my oil pan. I'm going to dump that gas into it. We'll see if we can get this thing cleaned out. I got to do that inside on the workbench. Uh, I'm probably not going to take you guys with me on that one. Sorry, but hey, just don't feel like running back and forth with the camera that much. We already got a video that's long enough, I think. <laughs> All right, back in a minute. Well, boys and girls, welcome to Florida. <laughs> yeah, it's pouring. Um, the wind is thankfully going away from me. So where I'm standing right now, I'm actually not getting too wet. Oh, you know what? Hang on, I stand corrected. It just changed direction and I am getting misted pretty heavily right now. But um, I'm going to push the car a little further in the garage. And uh, boy, they did say it was going to be windy today. They weren't kidding. Um, we're going to continue to work on it. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping just because of the rain. The car's inside, so she's not going to get spritzed. So I don't have to worry too much about rust and that kind of stuff. The humidity might bother her a little bit, but I think she'll live. <laughs> After all, she made it through a hurricane, right? All right, let's go ahead and push some stuff into the garage a little deeper. And uh, we'll keep on working. All right, I found out where it was clogged inside of this carburetor here. Now you see the accelerator pump area here has two inlets and an outlet. The inlets on the bottom here, it actually comes from inside the bowl. You see that brass fitting that's there? There's actually a hole right next to that, and that's where the fuel gets into. Now behind that is actually a little check valve, and that way when the um, throttle is released, the accelerator pump will suck or draw fuel from in here. However, when it's pushed, it pushes the check valve in, which stops the fuel from going back into the bowl, and then it takes the other path through here instead. And it goes up through this little tube, up through here, and then out the spout. Now, when you release the throttle, once again, and it's sucking, what stops it from sucking air back down through here? And the answer is there's another check valve or a little ball that's inside of there. And it turned out that little ball was stuck. And I didn't find any debris in it. I just had to get in there with a, like a paper clip and just poke at it a little bit until eventually the carburetor cleaner went through. I, I haven't seen that happen before on a Solex carburetor. My Delortos on the Fastback, one of them actually was stuck in the open position versus closed and was causing a, a flooding issue. But uh, in this case, it was actually the opposite. It wouldn't flow at all, so I had no accelerator pump. Uh, why it got stuck, I don't know. It was pumping the other day. I didn't find any debris of any sort, but you know, it's an old carburetor. It's been sitting around for a long time on a shelf, and I don't know what kind of abuse it's seen or how people treated it in the past. Um, I'm pretty certain it hadn't been used, because as I said, all the screws on it, everything looked brand new, except for that damn jet, which was black. Everything else in this carburetor looked new except for that. Well, anyway, now that we've had that fixed, um, let's see if that makes any difference in how this is going to behave now. The sun just came out. 
There it is. The sun just came out. Corn rain and the sun came out. Actually, the rain slowed down a bit. Wind is still blowing pretty good though. Yeah, okay. Figured I'd share that with you. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and take this carburetor and put it back on that engine. Um, putting everything back together, of course. The diaphragm, I may not have needed a new one, but it doesn't matter, it's got one now, so, you know, one of those things that's fixed, you don't have to worry about it again. Get this thing all put back together, everything back the way it's supposed to be, and I think it should be fine. I think it should be fine, and then we'll have to check to see why we're not having a proper low-speed uh, air mixture problem here, which I meant to actually remove this air screw completely and look underneath it and see what's going on there. We'll see if it's grooved, or if it's ground, or cut off, or abused, seeing as how the jetting in this carburetor was wrong, which by the way, all the rest of the jets are, are correct. Well, at least I can tell they are anyway, without having been drilled. No, I don't see any grooves on there, and it doesn't look like it's bottoming out on anything that it shouldn't be. In fact, it's nice and clean. A little white from when I sprayed it with some uh, chemical, but no, there's no groove on it. I don't see anything wrong with that, uh, the air screw. Alright, we're gonna go with that. Put it back in. There it is, stopped. Two and a half turns. Chances are we're probably going to have to snug that back up because it was behaving like it was before and there might be something wrong there. Alright, let's put the cover back on this thing here and put the uh, diaphragm back in so we can call this section of the carburetor finished. Put the spring in first, just like that. Diaphragm goes up inside the lid. And this is critical, you want these screw holes to line up with the diaphragm. If for some reason they don't, you'll drive a screw right through it, and then you really screwed it up, so to speak. Line up, you bastard. Yeah. Earlier it was just fine when I rebuilt it on the bench, but now that I'm going to do it over here with everyone watching on this video, it's going to have an issue. Fucking figures, right? <laughs> Got a different screwdriver that I prefer for working on carburetors here. I wasn't using it for some reason, even though it was right in front of me. Alright. Put our little nozzle back on.
right. Good to go. All right, let's start bolting our carburetor back together on this uh, engine. my little wire gauge drill bits here. These are excellent for checking gauge of jets. Or drilling them if you have to. the hell I was thinking. I actually put the lid on the carburetor without the gasket in it. Getting excited here and making mistakes. Alright, now the gasket's in it.
Okay. Put on one throttle return spring. Good news. Hook up our plunger wire and our choke wire like before. Then put our distributor back together. Alright, at this point I think we're ready to fire it back up again. Hook up my uh, oil light here. Okay, um, <laughs> you know what, my little rubber gogies keep slipping off over here, um, something's wrong down there, I don't know what it is with those things, I'm going to figure out how to keep those on there real quickly, and uh, then I think we're going to test run it. Alright, I've already powered up that fuel pump, and uh, I checked the accelerator pump, and it is pumping, and I don't see any leaks coming out of it. This is all good news. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to fire this thing up now, and uh, let's see what happens. Here. Let's try that. Alright, one thing's for sure. It was a little bit flooded for me pumping it. <laughs> Let's see what we got now. like it's running strangely too lean again. Even more lean than before perhaps.
something's wrong here. Seems like my idle circuit here might be plugged, which was fine before, but now it's not. Let's see here. behaving like there's some kind of new problem here because now it won't idle at all. Maybe I do finally have a vacuum leak here. Let's check the fuel mixture screw here. I don't know if it's biting it or not. There it is. Oh, come on. before I mess with it. vacuum leak right here. It try to snug that up just a little bit.
Okay. I don't know what the hell's wrong with this. I think that carburetor may have something seriously wrong with it. Um, I know I don't have any vacuum leaks out and about. There may be one at the bottom of that carburetor. But I'm going to try another carb on it just real quick and just see if there's any difference. Just be, would be nice to know for peace of mind, if not anything else. So um, I'm going to go dig one out. All right. This is a Mexican-made Bocar carburetor. Uh, I put it on here just to check for leaks. Um, it looks a little scruffy on the outside. That's because it was just sitting in a dusty environment. I cleaned out the throat. All the actions look good on it. I pulled the jets out. They appear to be clean. And when I pressurized the fuel, it didn't overflow. And the accelerator pump seemed to do what it was supposed to. So I think we're going to be good with this one. Um, I was brake shit angry before. I actually had to leave that camera off for about, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour while I was dicking around here with some other stuff. And um, I'm about to give it another shot with this carburetor on there. And I don't know how it's going to run. I don't know what it's going to do. But, um, uh, frustrated, just <laughs> frustrated beyond belief. Anyways, I don't know if you can see it, but the German one is down there on the ground. I guess you can't see it. It's way down there. This is the Mexican one. It's just to prove that they are different. Yeah, I got two different carburetors. This sucker is brand new and has problems. I don't understand what they are. I'm not dealing with it. Okay. Hook up some wires here. A choke. And I'm hoping that the plunger here in the choke works properly. Choke feels a little sticky. I might have to lube it. You know, it's kind of warm out here anyway today. I guess I really don't need it. All right, um, let's see, where's my rotor? The rotor back on here. The cap back on. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, need my oil pressure light. Damn it. All right. Okay, we're hooked up now. We got the negative hooked up to the distributor, which is actually trying to slip off. Let me go ahead and fix that too. We got our positive on here. We already know that the fuel is not going to leak and it is already hooked up, so no need to worry about it. There should be some gas in there. I've already pumped it a bunch of times. I probably shouldn't have done that again, but it's, chances are it's probably flooded or close to flooded. Let's go ahead and juice it up here with some electricity. All right, fuel pump is hooked back up. And ignition. It's now hooked up. You can see we got our oil light. Make sure that's not going to fall. It's a little precarious the way it's hooked up right now. Okay, here we go. Contact.
Okay, well that obviously was a short circuit. But we are running a lot better than we were. A lot better. <laughs> All right, let me hook this back up here. This is rather important. If that light comes on when I'm running this thing, I gotta shut it off immediately. Okay, let's fire it back up. Why is it having so much trouble turning over here? I think that battery is just gone for shit for sure. Sounds like it's not getting enough fuel. Uh oh. Am I gonna be able to turn that screw from here? Maybe not. Yeah. Huh. Okay, that's gonna need some loot on it. It looks a little rusty. Starting to get dark again. I got a feeling we're about to get rain done. It's been raining on and off the whole whole afternoon today. There we go. A little bit of lube sure went a long way.
Well, I'm not seeing the accelerator pump pumping, even though it was before. Oh, I stand corrected. Never mind. I just couldn't see it while it was running. No, it's pumping. Um, why do I see a leak, or is that water? Yeah, that's just water. Manifold is getting cold. <laughs> Thought for sure that had to be gas. Nope, it's just a manifold getting cold. The other night when it um, dropped down to about 46 degrees while I was working outside, actually ice formed on uh, this part of the manifold right here. And uh, touching it now, it um, it's cool, not cold, but cool. But the humidity right now is way up, way up. So of course it's gonna get wet. Uh, if I drove it some more, the engine compartment of course would get warm and these heat risers, oh yeah, they're hot. Uh, will heat up the manifold, of course, in doing their job. Uh, I did blow the sandblaster through that sucker all the way out the other side. You should have seen the big black cloud that came out of it. But that pipe, which was constricted down to something like this, opened a way up. So it made a huge difference in that. Uh, this looks to be running well. Otherwise, um, if the accelerator pump is working and uh, we have no vacuum leaks, which apparently it idles st stable and the screws do what they're supposed to do, then I think the next thing to, to say is that um, we probably have to up the jet perhaps one more size. It's currently at a 130, but it's probably got to go up to like a 132.5 or a 135, somewhere in there. So we're going to experiment with that. Uh, I do have to take the cover off the top of the carburetor to pull that jet out once again. Pain in the ass. It's a lot of little screws, but hey, that's part of the that's part of the animal. You know, if you want a Volkswagen, you're going to have to tune these things, and uh, who does it anymore, right? Yeah, it's got to be you. <laughs> All right, let's get on it. Well, it's raining again. Before I hit the record button, it was actually raining worse. <laughs> anyway, we got that carburetor switched out. We got a bigger jet put in there at a 135. We're about to fire this puppy up. And I'm hoping I'm done today because I'm just tired of working on this thing today. I've been out here a little too long. And when you're looking forward to video editing, which is the part that I really don't like, that's when you can tell you're, uh, getting tired. <laughs> Alright, let's fire this thing up. Okay. There's my jumper screwdriver all the way over here. Right. Here goes. Aww. Oh. Wow. Just started pouring out there. Well, 
both got the typical 009 um, hesitation. And once you get that revs up, it sounds just fine. It's no longer starving for fuel. Yeah, that's 009 nonsense. Next thing we need to do is the uh, single vacuum double advanced distributor to get rid of this thing. I'm currently rebuilding one right now to put in here. And um, once we've got that in a good shape, we'll put it in here, retime it, and hook it up to uh whoa, don't want that to fall in the belt. <laughs> And uh, once we got that running correctly, I'll connect it to the uh, vacuum port on this side of the carburetor. These other ones stay capped off. And that should solve the uh, revving up issue. And it should be good. Ah, fuel pump disconnected itself. It starts for fuel just now. Okay. Vibration must have caused it to disconnect. Anyway, I think we're done for today. That is enough of working on this engine. Oh, I am just tired, just tired of this thing today. I've had enough. <laughs> Anyways, it runs good. It turns out that my 34 Pick 3 carburetor, that brand new one that I had, has some kind of problem. I don't know what it is. Uh, I did fix a few of them along the way this morning, but. Uh, Unfortunately, it just it, it didn't get it. I don't quite understand what's going on with it. It seems like there's some kind of internal vacuum leak somewhere. I mean, your guess is as good as mine as to where that could possibly be. But all I did was take this one, clean it up, check the jetting inside of it to make sure that it was correct. It was up the jet from a 130 to a 135 because it was running just a little bit lean and now it runs, runs really good. That uh, distributor does need to be changed out from a 009 to a SVDA. Um, like I said, I'm gonna actually replace that shortly i've got one i'm rebuilding right now once i get that together it gets bloop, dropped in there the timing gets reset on this thing and uh, this thing should be ready to rock and roll um i'm quite satisfied with everything that's gone on today so anyways you guys don't forget like this video if you've actually watched through this whole thing i really do appreciate it don't forget to subscribe and pluck the dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button that way to get updates every time i upload a new video and don't forget to check out duckman cycles vw garage up on the facebook group page over 600 members right now way over 600 and it's growing constantly and uh, as always check out my other channel vv the duck vv if you ask any questions here we're going to try to follow up with a q a video tomorrow afternoon that's right around lunchtime is usually when i release one of those so if you got any questions Questions about this or any suggestions or something that you guys might want to talk about go ahead and post it and I'll try to answer it in a video thanks so much for watching really appreciate it we'll see you tomorrow